What is up, everybody? We're here. It's glory, glorious edition of Saturday Night Live, and uh, really excited to not because the balls got the win. What's up, Monty McWilliams? I'm glad you're in, buddy. I hadn't. Uh, I know you try to catch these, and I'm I'm glad you're in here, my man. So I'm gonna share this over on my Facebook page uh, really quickly. I got my laptop sitting in front of me. So I don't really have a crazy topic for tonight, so we're just going to talk some baits, and I'll try to answer some questions and, and whatnot. And uh, I am going to give away some stuff from Hog Farmer Bait Company tonight uh, here on the stream. So let me uh, get this shared up on my Facebook page real quick. <clears throat> Howdy, Bill. What's up, Jack Mitchell? How are you, bud? Let's see. What's up, Sean? So I'm going to share this over on Facebook right now. What's up, Frank? Oh, no, I don't want to have no photos. Let's just post this thing. Yes, right. Go Big Orange. I'm excited about today. What's up, Mike Dove? North Dakota, man. Uh, I bet it's nice and cold up there. Uh, it's 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 cool now. What's up, Josh? Ice fishing. How'd you do, Jack? I'm doing good, uh, Victor. See the usual suspects are in here tonight. Thanks, Bush Rat. Go Big Orange. What's up, Charlie? Hey, you know what? I'm not going to get too crazy with the balls and cats deal because, uh, let's be honest, it's one and one and uh, let's see how we do during the SEC tournament. So um, I'm going to pop the chat out so I can see it easier and um, just keeping it real, both are really, really good teams. Uh, you know, UK had a guy hurt, um, but what would you rather throw right now, the Curve 55 or Cloud 9 C6? Personally, uh, I like the Curve 55 if I'm fishing a lot of rocky stuff. Um, if, uh, if I'm fishing just some 45 degree banks and not a lot of crazy rock, I'll probably go with the Cloud 6. But uh, what's up, Troy? Yeah, man, I uh, just got some more swag from Six Cents Fishing. Um, so... And let you guys know, uh, they just dropped a bunch of new colors in the Curve 55, uh, the Thud, and some other stuff. Uh, dropped some new baits on there. Uh, the Mag Dog, uh, 130 and 150 are now on Six Cents website. I use that code Baitman uh, to get you 10% off. I'm going to try to get a nice little care package uh, the first of the week. Uh, that way... Uh, I can show you guys some of the new colors and new baits from Six Cents. I'm really excited about the Mag Dog. I uh, saw that ICAST. So I'll answer a few questions here. What color 55 in stained water? I would go anything with some chartreuse in it. Um, if I got one here that I really like. Yeah. Of course, this is a play off my favorite trap. Uh, this right here is Muddy Water Crawl. <clears throat> Even though it's very close to Tiger truce but uh, what's up st chris well, that's muddy water crawl in the curve 55 if you got some really stained water i suggest anytime that uh chartreuse belly and red top always a killer in the spring especially in that clear water man y'all see my finger I ain't trying to flip you off but i smashed uh, 150 pound monty my man don't start it this saturday night don't do it don't do it again guys Oh my goodness. Monty, you know better than that. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, Monty. I really appreciate it, man. Um, you guys had me really close to, uh, I'm not going to, uh, getting a little man pout going uh, last weekend. Yeah, Dallas, I'm sure if you did a tailored box, they would put that in there. But, uh, you know, I appreciate that, Monty. Uh, and it's kind of funny story. I'll tell y'all, uh, Monty and I uh, got to texting because he made an order when I was selling tackle online, and and it said Halls, Tennessee, and and uh, I won't tell you which Halls, 
uh, keep it private. But I said, man, I ain't, there ain't a whole lot of people uh, in that area. And I texted him, said, hey, man, uh, you know, my family's from this, this place. And which one are you from? And he told me, I was like, wow, what a small world. And uh, we got to texting after that. And uh, I was really... I thought that was really cool. Uh, small town, West Tennessee. That's where my parents are from. Got a lot of good memories there. Used to be uh, Lauderdale Lake there. And I know they drained it, but it was awesome crappie fishing, awesome duck hunting. I heard stories from my dad in no end. So it's pretty cool that there's fishermen everywhere. And with the power of Facebook and YouTube, I can connect to some people. Uh, Chris Morrow, awesome dude. Thank you so much, man. I enjoyed meeting you. And... Uh, I've got to get you some. I got to get you some Cordell baits. They're right here in front of me. I've just been so busy. I, I think for ten bucks, I'm gonna throw you a little something special in there. You know what I mean? So, I'll, I'll answer some more questions and I'll tell you details of the giveaway. So, I'm gonna ask y'all a random fishing question, uh, and the first person to answer it tonight is gonna to get uh, some stuff from Hog Farmer. Uh, you live in South Knox. I, I like Knoxville. What's up from Kansas? Well, I'm here in Kentucky. Kansas, uh, man, I know there's some good fishing there. Uh, I am going to go to the Classic. I'm going to be there Friday afternoon and all day Saturday, and then I'm coming home Sunday to go to work. So, All right, which is the better rod, Six Cents Lux or Phoenix Feather, since they're similar in price? Ooh, the Phoenix Feather is probably a little bit lighter, but the Lux is a really good rod. They're very similar builds, so... Um, very cool. G Money Strong Outdoors. Good evening. Hey man, good evening to you. The Bateman box is still available. Uh, you can get it on sixcentsfishing.com. I'm on the top. There's a tab that says more. You click that. God. All right, guys. I appreciate the donations. Um, if I, I, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't deserve all that. I'm just says. I'm just. I just love to talk baits and, and help you guys out. Love to live stream, like to interact with you guys. I'm not doing this for the money now. I'd love to do this for a living. Let's just be honest, but I don't make enough on the live streams to really amount to anything. But uh, it looks like we're going to get some new camera equipment pretty soon. Uh, you know, I will tell you all, if you don't know, you don't get money instantly from YouTube. So I basically have to wait like a month before I get anything. So March is going to be nice. Uh, and... Hopefully, uh, you know, my goal this year is possibly get a drone, and I think getting a drone would be awesome to really help break down parts of the lakes and explain techniques better and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll get back to answering some questions right now. Again, thank you so much uh, for that donation, uh, Mr. Drake Toby. I really appreciate that, and uh, tell you what, man, I hope you have a blessed day. I I'm blessed to be able to get here on YouTube uh my little girl's asleep. Uh, my big brother's taking care of her right now. So, <clears throat> uh oh, that's some bad 110s falling apart. You know, uh, I like the 110, and I'll be honest, it is not the toughest jerk bait ever built. Uh, you cannot bang them things off rocks. So, thanks, St. Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. What is a better 5XD rod, the Lowrider Cranker 2 or the XD Cranker? Uh, the Lowrider Cranker 2, the XD Cranker is just a little overpowered for a 5XD. Great 6XD, Big Z Boss rod, you name it. Cold water, kind of murky, what should we try? Uh, if you want to fish shallow, uh, I'd be throwing a big black and blue jig or a tube. Uh, definitely get some wide wobbling crankbaits and that muddy water chartreuse and black, um, chartreuse and red, that kind of stuff. Uh, work your way from the mouths of the bays toward the back. Uh, fish the north end banks that are really, really warm. Cody Smith, appreciate that, man. Who else hit me up on there? Jesse Osborne. I'm sure you're like everyone else. You give us a place to go and talk fishing. Yeah, man. Uh, that's kind of what I do on here. I just I just want to talk fishing with you guys. I, I'm you know I'll be honest. I'm not the best fisherman out there by, by far. Actually, a fishing trip with me can be quite embarrassing for me. I mean, I'm usually prone to blow up one or two reels in the first ten minutes, uh, break off a lot of stuff. 
uh, usually end up cussing, uh, but I have fun whether I go Lake X, Kentucky Lake, or anywhere else. And, and I've always said when fishing isn't fun, I'll stop. And uh, I'll be honest with y'all, in probably 2010 to 2012, fishing wasn't fun, and I stopped. And the worst part was Kentucky Lake was absolutely on fire. The 10X did come out. And you could catch 25 pound bags every afternoon. And now, and I got burned out. And I'll just tell y'all, honestly, the tournament scene burned me out really, really bad. And um, uh, I, I'm personally a cinnamon roll guy, cinnamon roll. And uh, so I've kind of, you know, I got back in fishing some tournaments with my old fishing partner. We we did really good in the Triton tournament. Made a top five there. Uh, I had a bonehead mistake in a big buddy tournament cost us like six thousand dollars always make sure you tag your fish if you want to call them um but what's my favorite color on a six cents flat side crank well that's a good question victor uh you know i can always pull out the box here i think this is the box this is like my flat side spring mafia box you can tell this thing is freaking loaded um where it, and I did grab the wrong box because I don't have a flat size in here. It's so many crankbait boxes. I am crankbait poor. Uh, yeah, they're in here, right? This box. This is probably one of my favorite flat sides from Six Cents. This is just uh, the bull crawfish color. I really like this one. You could throw this anywhere. Dirty. I'll even throw this in some kind of clear water. Uh, but this is one I really really like and I do really good on this later in the spring uh, Which is kind of like that spro cellmate color. I forgot the exact color of this right here uh, But I really really like this um, and That's on the six cents. There's another color they got on their website. It's called brown eye crawl and it is a sleeper I had a couple in The stumps of Kentucky Lake snatched them from me uh, but brown eye crawl is really good. All right, high water and floaters make me cuss. Yes, sir. Uh, what's my? Let's see. What's your opinion on Paris Lane and possibly banning tournaments? So, this is a local issue. I'll explain this uh, to my non-Kentucky Lake guys. So, there was a proposal to ban tournaments from I believe June to August out of Paris Lane. Now, what they're thinking is they they want to promote fish care and all that. Uh, personally. I'm all about uh, making sure our resources, our lakes, are always good to fish. I don't think you ban tournaments. I think you go to three fish limit. Uh, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think it would be detrimental to the community, uh, as tourism. Right now, with the Asian carp problem on Kentucky Lake, uh, we don't need to do anything um, to really hurt that. Uh, Chris, I got about 150 for Scottsboro Tech. I'm trying to buy it from Hog Farm, or should I be saying the Bait Man? Me, Absolutely. You tell Scott, say, hey man, I watched the Bait Man. I seen your Hog Farmer stand up, Ned Heads. This is what this is right here. This is awesome. I'm going to give some of these away tonight. You just, it's right there, it's the Hog Farmer stand up, Ned. Look at that sucker. That thing is cool. And then, uh, Scott wanted me to tell you guys on YouTube as well. Uh, he has the five wire eight blade chartreuse uh, a rigs on the side as well as a BFL rig with chartreuse blades. So I'll show you a BFL rig here in a second. But uh, anytime you guys order for six cents, hog farmer, any of those guys, let them know Bateman sent you. You know, uh, you know, me and Scott, he's a good dude. And I said, hey man, I'll send you all the business you want. I, I believe in your stuff. It works. And he's a bait nut just like me. So let's say I'll answer some forward. What line do I use for spinner and chatter baits? Uh, if I'm fishing around a lot of grass, I will use braided line. And I'm not the you know craziest braided line connoisseur. I use dye with J braid mainly because they sent me a bunch of free stuff and it works pretty good. Uh, it's actually really smooth. It's good on a spinning reel. Uh, Sunline SX1 is one of my favorite braids. And uh, I, Power Pro uh, Original. Uh, but I'll use like 30, 40 pound braid uh, around the grass. Now if I'm fishing normal like on Kentucky Lake, I'm going to throw you know, 14, 17 pound fluorocarbon. 
uh, mainly Sunline Assassin, actually 15 pound, that's kind of my happy medium right there. Uh, the reason I want a little bit heavier line is uh, you're fishing that uh, around uh, stumps, uh, laydowns, rock, and I want something that, that can take some abrasion resistance. I am a guy that sometimes I go a little light on the line. I get a few more bites, but I like at least at least 15 pound fluorocarbon. Your choice of what brand you want to use. Uh, we all have our favorites. Let's see. What about old school Norman Suspend DD14 and DD20 for le ledges? I'm glad you said that because I have this box right here that my dad gave me. Yes, my dad was a bait man too. Oh my gosh. One of these days, I'm going to do this show. And this behind me is going to collapse. And it is just going to be a bad deal. So, check these out. This is one of the most old school big plugs you can get. And that is a Norman DD-22. And I'll just tell you all right now. This is a bait that still gets thrown by tour level guys. And it doesn't get bought at the tackle shops. And... This thing right here will absolutely crush them. Sour grape, good call, Sean. That is an awesome bait. So that was one of my favorite uh, colors. But I'll tell you one I really snatched a lot of jaints on. Let's see if I can find it in here. This is my dad's box. It was this one right here? I mean, this is this is not a flashy color at all. But is this baby bass uh, Norman right here? Man, I caught a lot of good fish on this color right there. Um, and they made a root beer color that was really, really good. I mean, my dad's got some old school. But these, you know, here's a DD-14. This color was popular. And you see how short that bill is? I mean, it's, they don't go 14 and 22 feet. I can tell you that. This goes about 12. And uh, on a good day, you can get it. Uh, DD-22 to get about 16, 17 feet. Now, I'll tell you a story on this color right here. So, I used to work at a tackle shop called Fisherman's Headquarters uh, in Draftonville. It was my first job. Well, the owner at that time, Jeff Evans, had a love affair with the Rapala Crawdad color. Crawdad number seven. And he got this guy, his name was Al from Bill Norman, uh, to paint a bunch of prototypes in this color right here. And they're just going to be for Fisherman's Headquarters. And then all of a sudden, oh, we got all the samples and everything looks good. And they said, no, we can't make those baits for you. And we're like, what the crap? Guess what was in Bass Pro Shop a month later? All the colors that Jeff had designed. And this was one of them. So I think, I I think if I wanted to, I could probably get my hands on the original ones. Look what I just found in here. Looky here. I just found a Bagley's DB3. You talk about old school crankbaits, guys. There you go. That is an original Bagley DB3. That dog will still hunt for sure. That is a it's a pretty desired crankbait for collectors. Um, there's some riding on the bottom, so it probably ain't really worth a whole lot. Man, there's some cool stuff in here. There's some cool stuff. All these old Norman colors, old suspend models. Look at that one. That's crazy. It's still hard to beat this one right here. Between me and my partner, we've won more money on this crankbait right here than any other one in a box. And that is right here. This is a uh, uh, parrot. And a parrot, man, this thing right here freaking snatches them. I'll tell you all, there's something about these DT-16s. When you hit brush piles and wood, they do something no other crankbait will. I don't know why. Uh, it doesn't get hung up real bad. It might be the balsa. And this one's faded out. This is a good one. I like them when they're good and faded looking. I don't even know if they make this color anymore. We used to catch them on this too. This was this was the Lake Barkley color. This white and green back. Always kind of good on Lake Barkley. But anyway, got sidetracked. Got into the old school baits there. So let's see. Let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I love the Norman Deep Little Hand. Cats look scared today. Vols are ready. I, I think a lot of people underestimate how tough Thompson Bowling Arena is to play in. Uh, let's see. What's under those Strike King KVDs back there to your left? Uh, 
right here is uh, this is a box of chatterbaits. Uh, this is a random box of like mid death divers. This is the money box. This has got uh, flat sides and homemades and stuff like that. I've gone through that before. If you guys would like to see maybe a, my arsenal video of what I actually have, you know, maybe I should drop one of those videos. So, let's see. Bateman, you were my go-to guy for tackle when you are at your previous online store. Besides TW, you have any other online stores I should shop? Yeah, actually, uh, Carolina Fishing Tackle uh, is a very good online store. It has a lot of hard-to-get stuff. Uh, the Hookup Tackle is uh, really good. Um... Bass Mafia actually has a, a store. Uh, I think it's like you know, have to Bass Mafia online or something. Land Big Fish is great. They're in Kentucky too, and they have a ton of Zoom colors and baits. Um, there's really not any bad places out there. Tackle Direct, all that stuff. I think Tackle Warehouse does have the Hog Farmer Stand Up Net. I could be wrong. Um, so Brian, uh, you know. I'm not going to tell you anywhere where you guys where you can and can't shop. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm there or not. You know, I, I got to buy a tackle too. So, you know, I, <clears throat> even though I worked in tackle shops, I still order from other places, you know. Billy Stepping asks, thoughts on Smash Tech swim baits? Uh, I got a good thought. I'm fixing to show y'all one. Because I need to let this let you guys know I had a subscriber send me some stuff in the mail let me answer a few questions here a long time ago a huge black plug from fisherman's headquarters and that we crushed them car body point dude yes I loved fishing car body point uh, that I haven't caught them there in years but man I caught some great big smallmouth there uh, at night time man I'd love to I'd love to uh, I We'll see. We'll see. I, I kind of like doing this and not having to worry about all the other stuff. There's a lot more that goes on than just opening an online store. So, let's see. Mint under the KVD cranks hanging up, but I saw their skeets. Yeah, there's uh, some mini SKTs. One of my favorite little bitty uh, crankbaits. Uh, let's see. Tackle Trap and Boaz, man. Those guys are cool. If you guys love Daiwa reels... Tackle Trap has got it going on. And G. Loomis, uh, Mega Bass, man, those guys are awesome. ACS has got the baits. They got some good stuff there. Um, yeah, I want to try that VM Laboom Spinner Bait. I got some ideas, and I'll be honest, I think I'm just going to throw a black, uh, a black and blue skirt on that sucker, and I think it'll be the Nick Lamoon Boom swim, uh, Night Spinner Bait. Uh, VM makes some really good stuff. Do you think it's the tool or the carpenter use it? Man, I'll be really honest with you. Um, anybody can buy any bait I have right here. And I can tell you it's a magic bait. But if you don't put it in the right spot, it doesn't matter. So, I think it's a combination of both. If you can get in the right area with the right bait that you're confident with or the fisher body, you can be lights out. You know, I can go take a $20 mega bass here, uh, but if I go chunk it in lily pads, that ain't going to matter. But if I go find that little, if I put my homework in and find where those fish are biting it at the right time of year, yes, I, I would think it uh, outperform many baits like it. What's up, Tony? Let's see. Japan Craw is a good color, and if that's the one you need to find, that's the one you need to buy. I'll have to check out your stuff, Countryside Outdoorsman. I, I subscribed to a couple new channels tonight. Uh, speaking of, I actually was watching some Guggen videos before I came in. I watched John B. I like John B. And Big Big Bass Mafia unboxing uh, there. And so Bass Mafia and the Guggen Squad have now partnered up. And supposedly they're going to design some boxes. So I know the guys at Bass Mafia real well. They reach out to me quite a bit. And I think they're great guys. And I'll be honest... Uh, I think some of the Guggen guys have got some good ideas from what I hear, and uh, hopefully um, I'll be able to help out a little bit too on that. Uh, I'm going to be at ICAST, and I'm probably going to hang out in the Bass Mafia booth quite a bit. So if you guys go there, that's where you'll find me. 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, FishermanCentral.com. I've been on that website. They got some cool stuff. Very clean website. I heard they got an awesome um, place too. James, I'm with you, buddy. I keep telling them you need a 10XD coffin. Got to have that. Do you think we ever think the bass brain? Yes, absolutely. Listen, bass are pretty simple creatures. When it's warm, they're going to be active. When it's cold, they're not going to be active. When they're hungry, they're going to eat. Uh, that's kind of how I am. When I'm hot, I want to cool down. When I'm cold, I want to warm up. So think of it like that. When it's hot, they're going to go deep. They're going to get in shade. When it's cold, they're going to get toward the sun. They're going to get shallow so they can warm up. Uh, you put enough food around them, eventually they're going to bite. Uh, just like me. I I've lost a lot of weight. You might can look back at some of the old Bateman videos and think, man, there's something different. I've lost about 35, almost 40 pounds. And, but if you put a steak in front of me long enough, I'm just going, no, 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 on that thing. So what is my favorite Bubba shot setup? Wow, what a question. Uh, it would be, I don't have one. So let's see. What do I think of the Z-Man jackhammer? I love, uh, I love that, uh, that that's, that's the deal. I'm just going to be honest with you. There are chatterbaits and then there are jackhammers. And I am the old school guy and I say it's an evergreen jackhammer because it really is. Evergreen was making that bait and then now they got to pay Z-Man a royalty. So I love the jackhammer. I, I really need to load up. I was telling myself the other day if Uncle Sam would treat me right, I'm probably going to get me, you know, like two because they cost so much. I'm just going to get two. Uh, it won't stop freaking raining here. So, what is the best chatterbait trailer? Man, that's just... So, I, I try not to say the best. I'm not in titles of videos, but uh, I like the Zacco from Yamamoto. All my plastics are, like, way over here, and I don't want to knock everything up. Uh, I've heard the Advantage Jawbreaker's really good. Actually, I got one right here somewhere. Uh, I've never... Uh, used it but i've heard oh that's uh no i didn't i think i sent them back no the jawbreaker is pretty good it will vibrate really really well it doesn't start up as fast as jackhammer it's, uh jackhammer is really tight so it would look like this going through the water where that advantage is kind of like this right here so again gotta find what the fish like uh i personally like uh the jackhammer Hey, Trevor Lee, watching UFC, going to get check out the upload stream later. Just want to drop in and show my support for the content I enjoy. Godspeed. Dude, Trevor, I appreciate it, man. I might try to watch some UFC as well tonight. Uh, I used to watch it old school, back when it was Vitor Belfort and Frank Shamrock and Tito Ortiz, and it wasn't so mainstream. And I watched about UFC 110. I was a big Rampage Jackson fan. That was my favorite guy. Well, hogfarmerbaits.com, Dwayne, you can get that stand-up Ned. So, um, I'm going to do a contest tonight, and uh, somebody's going to win uh, some of these hog farmer stand-up Neds. I'll send you a couple packs of these, and then I'm going to send you... Yeah, uh, this is the Spunk Shad. Man, look at this sucker right here. I'm going to send you that. I'm going to send you a pack of another color. Caught some today on a red jackhammer with a hog farmer spunk shed trailer. There you go. Proof is in the pudding. And then I'm going to send you guys a stand-up hair jig right here from Hog Farmer. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys a question, and the first person to get it right uh, will win, and somehow I'll get a hold of you. So... All right, let's go back to some questions. I see a lot of homemade balsam makers making some good looking stuff. Any recommendations or info on this topic? All right, we're gonna to have to get into my special box. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on tournament guys who never had a marshal in the back of the boat. Uh, I personally am not a big co-angler fan uh, at the pro level, at the Costa Series level BFL. I think it's awesome. Take it for what it's worth, a learning experience with a chance to win some money. 
you know. And I think what happened on the pro level, uh, the co anglers almost felt like it was their tournament, and they were started to fish against the pros. And you know, I could see on the pro side where that wasn't cool. MLF, you you don't have to have a co angler. I don't think I think with technology is so good as it is now with constant GoPros and all that stuff, it would be really hard to cheat in a major league, major level event. And I just think co-anglers should be reserved for that mid-entry and below. Nothing wrong with it. And I got some dudes, friends that are great. All right, let's see here. I'm going to answer some more questions. Always Kitex swim baits over Strike King swimmers for you. Uh, I got more Kitex, but I really like the Strike King rage swimmer. Honestly, cannot tell a difference. Um, I'm going to throw that brown orange jack on the back of a bruised pumpkin jackhammer. Dude, that sounds so good. Um, this is the time of year I really throw those oranges and reds and stuff like that. I have heard, uh, I seen a jawbreaker custom jig that was like, uh, chartreuse and purple, uh, and it looked awesome. I want to, I, I need to get my hands on a couple of those, but it was on an auction and God dang, it was, it was going more than the jackhammer, so I was like, man, I better back off. Can you work the spunk shed like a fluke? Uh, no, you can't. It is more like a Kitek without a paddle tail. It's meant for spinner baits. It's actually made really for this little stand-up Ned, but it's turned into be very versatile. Uh, let's see. What do you think of a Divine Swim Jig pair with a Kitek? I think that'd be awesome, because I do that myself. Um... All right, I got to answer some questions from Bass Monkey. He's asked me, top three YouTubers you want to fish with. I have fished with Fluke Master, and I fished with Matt Allen. So Matt was my number one. I hope to get to go out with Tim. I might have to go to California and fish with Matt again. Uh, I'm going to go fish with Alex Rudd uh, and go with Ben Nowak. And I'll be honest, I'd love to go fish with John B. I think John B is pretty good. You know why I like John B.? I'll tell you guys right now, John Bay, I'll give you some love. You may not watch the Bateman live stream. Um, but John B has a strong jig game. And of course, I'd love to go fishing with Milk, and Ben Milliken is is cool. And uh I don't know. It would be hard for me to narrow down top three. Mikey Balls and I have talked. Me and me and Balls are gonna get after some jaints. We've already said we're gonna do it this summer, so um that's kinda in the works. Uh I need to get Mikey on a live stream. He likes the the big hog farmer stuff, the big spoon, big bullshit. So, let's say John B. Milliken and Alex Rudd. That's the three guys, and let's just make four be um, uh, Mikey Balls. Been ever asked no love for Scott Martin. Man, I like Scott. We're good. We're friends, and uh, I like Scott a lot. And I don't consider him a YouTuber. I consider Scott an FLW pro that does youtube if that that sounds and, and i think scott production wise on he does a bang up job and there was a video of him on lake x I actually met scott and andy that morning uh wished him luck showed him how to get there and everything and he's supposed to link my channel on the bottom and he didn't shame on you scott but scott's a good dude i really like him come to nebraska and fish Milliken and me yeah uh, you know what i'd love to do it i would love to do that uh, I think Milken's got some sneaky holes down there, too. All right, let's see. I'm going to answer some more. What is your favorite pro bass fishing tour? I love them all. Right now, I'm, I'm loving MLF. I like what they're trying to do, but uh, I still watch bass. I still watch FLW. They all have their pros and cons, and I'm not going to get into which one's better uh, than other ones. I just want to see guys fish, and at the end of the day, show me the bait you're using. Let's see. Is it true... If you're not a YouTuber, you can't catch fish. Dustin, that's false. I haven't seen your YouTube channel, and I know you can catch plenty of fish, dude. I'm actually thinking of going, possibly going to Illinois next Saturday. I got invited to go to Egypt, so. All right, let's go back here. Winning weight at the Classic. I say 16 and a half pounds a day, so let's say 41 pounds, 6 ounces. That's going to be my guess. 41 pounds, 6 ounces. I'm going to go with Matt Robertson. Got to go with the homer pick. Go with my boy Matt. I would love to see, nothing better to see Matt Robertson win with that giant Onum hat at the Classic. Uh, let's see. Tips for bass fishing in muddy Pennsylvania water. Woo! I'm gonna ha I'd have to ask some of my Pennsylvania friends on that. Muddy water, 
cold in Pennsylvania. Maybe some black medbricks. I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with the waters there, but you know, anytime it's muddy water, uh, it warms up faster. So on sunny days, get them around lay downs, wood, pitch some jigs, soft plastics. Um, that kind of stuff doesn't change no matter what, where you're at. You're going to have to slow down in the muddy water unless you want to throw some cranks or, or throw some double Colorado spinner baits. Um, do I like releasing the fish right away? Absolutely. Um, I think that's really good on fish care. Um, I couldn't catch fish from a mud puddle, but I'm not a YouTuber. I can't, I'll, I'll be honest, the reason I don't post a lot of fishing videos, I really, I'll go fishing. I'm like, well, they're not going to watch this. There's not any fish catches in here. But, uh, go fish with Kendall uh, Gray. Yeah, uh, I don't know Kendall Gray, but if you're talking about Kendall Ar Arnold, yeah, I'm going to go fish with him. He's cool. Tickle tackle all gone, George. Let's see. Why don't big tournaments come to Clear Lake, California, Delta? They would have over 100 pounds for three days. I think so many people live in the Midwest versus that way. There's only about 10 guys that live, you know, from, let's say, Vegas West, if that. I would love to see that, though, uh, a Midwest uh, or Western swing. It was awesome when they came to Clear Lake. Let's see here. Ever fish a hair jig chatterbait? No, I have not. Uh, I have thrown that. Sh no, I take that back. I did throw uh, the hog farmer uh, trimmering. Um, I believe it's hog tie. So it's like a scrounge with hair on it. It's pretty awesome. Dude, Sean, all you got to do is get a hold of me on Instagram or however. Send me a message and we're going to go. Uh, I've got a place to stay there uh scott hog farmer says and comes to stay in his houseboat so youtubers versus tournament guys thoughts uh i think it's two different it's apples and oranges um i think you've seen a tournament guy and lake fort guy convert to youtube and you've seen scott martin really balance them both very well jacob wheeler's doing a pretty good job what I'm afraid of is going to happen is so many tournament guys are going, oh, I can jump on YouTube. I could be like these guys, and I'll get 100 million subscribers, and I'll make all this money, and I don't have to tournament fish anymore. And what they're going to find out, it's really hard to do that. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for almost a year and a half, two years now, and I'm getting close for 10,000 subs. Now, granted, I don't fish the FLW or Bassmaster Tour, but it's really hard to juggle that. And... Uh, but then again, if you ask the YouTubers to go out there and fish the FLW Tour, uh, they would be lost very easily. And that's not anything about their fishing ability. It's just apples to oranges. I mean, I can tell you, you get someone pay my entry fees right now. I don't care, Tam Packs or Vivid Video, whatever. I'll get me a boat, wrap it up, and I bet I don't fish any better than 100th in points. I will bet I finish better than Jason Christie. Not the real one, but Jason Christie... The fake Jason Crispy. So, what do you think about JJ Magic scent? I've never used JJ's, but uh, I use uh, just regular old Spike It. And then my buddy, uh, Mark Menendez, and another friend of mine come up with a product called Die Safe and Dying to Fish. And I use their stuff quite a bit. It's a really cool system. Uh, I'm going to get Tim, my buddy, on here one day. And it's like a plain old box with foam in the bottom and die scents. And it's made for co anglers or guys that do not want to spill it on the carpet of the boat. You pull that scent out, it's got a little tray in the middle, and you can dip it, and the foam absorbs all that stuff. It's a really cool idea. And I like their stuff because it's got a really strong garlic scent. All right, let's see. I don't think they're going to move the classic, Dustin, since that water will come here um, and it won't stay there. Best crankbait for pre spawn, five to ten feet deep. Uh, you know, as much as I like Six Cents, if let's just go one of the best one ever made, probably a Bandit 200. It'd really be hard to beat a Bandit 200 or a Spro Little John MD. Um, those are awesome baits. Whew, man, these comments are coming up fast, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep talking tackle with you guys. Uh, what's up, Zach? Let's see. I like Jacob Wheeler. I'll be honest with y'all. Uh, my Jacob Wheeler story is this. I met him when he was 16 years old at Fisherman's Headquarters and uh, got to talking and then he was really confident, like crazy confident. And I'm like, well, 
okay. And dude, the guy went out there and smashed him the next day. And then, it, then I was in the tax store again. He talked to me just like we're best friends. And uh, I used to film with Joe Thomas. And Jacob qualified for the All-American. And me and Joe were hunting. Uh, I'll never forget this. We were hunting in Maysville, Kentucky. Home of Tennessee, former Tennessee three-point specialist, Chris Lofton, Kentucky killer himself. We're hunting in Maysville early season, and it's really, really tough. And so we're talking, and he said, you know who's going with the All-American? I said, who's that? He said, Jacob Wheeler. And I said, really? The same Jacob I talked to? He said, yep. And guess what? Wheeler won it. And Joe called me and said, I told you so. He's the next big thing. And Joe was right. So you're going to have to give me a break just one second. I hear uh, my little girl's got up. and going to go check on her real quick. I'm sorry I'm back. I'm back. I had to go check on the kids, uh, make sure everything's okay. All right. Let's see. Let's get back to answering some questions. Did you see Smallmouth Crutch and how much money he spent to try to make it to the big time? People get delusional and think it's easy. Dude, uh, that guy's got some really cool videos, by the way. I actually met Travis. I just didn't know who it was. Super nice guy. But he, uh, he brings the heat and brings a lot of stuff to light that people don't uh, know. One overall net head weight, eight three sixteenths a quarter. I would go eighth ounce. The lighter you can get away with on a net, the better you can. Let's see. Whew. Hopefully, Brooke, where are the white women at? That's funny, Bill Cosby. Uh, buddy, I don't think you're going to have to worry about any white women for a while. Uh, Indiana, home of Jacob Wheeler and the best dirt sprint racing in the country. Man, I love me some World of Outlaw sprint cars. Uh, I'll just tell you guys, if I had an unlimited amount of money, I would be racing 410 sprint cars somewhere. I would be barrel rolling down the back straightaway of Eldora all the time. Can I tell a nasty joke? I mean, you can, but you know, I try to keep it PG up in this chat, so... Uh, Bateman, I'm like, got my Bateman box and it's great. Really like the lures. That's awesome, Bernard. I appreciate it, man. I oh, mean, I like the wings on them. And you just go in those corners so much faster. So, uh, I, I'd probably get Dustin to wrench me up, man. It, uh, it is a really expensive sport. Whew. I think my little girl is having a time. So, all right. Uh, let's see if I got any other questions here. Uh, I don't see any right now. Uh, whenever kennel, uh, I think I said to myself, once it's got to warm up a little bit. So, do you think the main difference between the pros and weekend fishermen is mainly the time spent on the water? I think that's a big one. Uh, but I know some guys that spend a lot of time on the lake and they still don't catch them. Hey, Zach, I appreciate the help, man. There's no problem. No problem. I always like to uh, take care of guys. I try to be available uh, the most I can. Yeah, I want to see Matt do well. Uh, I think the biggest difference between pros and weekend fishermen, yes, they spend time on the water. It's mentally. Uh, everybody can cast a rod. Everyone, or everyone can cast a reel. They can use a rod. But mentally, those guys are way up here. Um, definitely... They know how to find patterns within a pattern. Uh, they don't fish memories. They fish the moment. Uh, that's what separates the pros. Dang, Bill. I sure hate to hear that. It's been flooding here as well. So, I have, I've I've watched Fish the Moment, man. He's got some good stuff. There's some stuff I agree with him on and uh, stuff I don't. Uh, I really... I would like to... I, his ledge fishing stuff is good. Uh, there's some stuff I would really tweak, though, um, the way I, I'd, I'd fish. So. Would Jane Juice be a permanent six cents color? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to talk to Casey. Uh, it's kind of a custom-painted deal he's doing right now. Uh, we'll see where that goes. I did tell him I would like the purple to be a little stronger, and he said, 
I don't have a darker purple. And he didn't mean that bad, but uh, I actually kind of like the light purple and silver gray. It's different. And man, I threw it out in the pond the other day by my house in the muddy water. It looked good. So they're like pro athletes. It's a million crop of guys to go big time. We're just mere mortals. I agree. I have always said that professional bass fishing, anytime you got to pay an entry fee, there's no different than fishing. There's no difference in entering the World Series of Poker than there is uh, entering a Bassmaster tournament where you put your money in a pot. Because all that fishing is is a loophole of legalized gaming for rednecks. And I don't mean rednecks in a bad way, but you, you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, they're putting all their money in a pot, and, and they're participating in a sport, and the winner gets their share of the money. Monty, I'll talk to Casey this week. I got to send him some emails. Uh, we'll see if we can get Jank Juice ready in the next week or two. So it may be uh, a deal where Casey just hand paints uh, a select amount of them. They'll be more expensive. They are all hand painted from Casey. Um, and maybe if that goes well, we'll put Casey put it up in the six cents production line and several baits. But Kentucky won't break the flood record unless it rains a lot this week. So. If you're going to Lake Egypt, spend an extra day, and I'll take you out on Kincaid. Need a couple of weeks, and the water temps come out. All right, I could do that. I could definitely do that. I've heard Kincaid's really good. Top three bucket lace places to fish. Uh, Baccarat, uh, Clear Lake, right before the spawn, and uh, I will go Thousand Islands, New York. I won't go those three. I've been to St. Clair, but... I'm either going big or I'm going brown. And then I'm going to go big and brown. Where's this A this A rig with chartreuse blades? It's on the Hog Farmer website. Let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Heck yeah, I'd, I'd love to try one of their secret lures. Man, Hog Farmer Bates, uh, dude, has really got his website going on good here. Let's see, let's look at the rigs. Let's see, five wire rigs. Let's see if he put it on here. Yeah, so when you get on Hog Farmer's website, if you go to five wire rigs, it's a version. Uh, five wire chartreuse blades, and then there's a five wire four blade chartreuse blades. So this is the five wire chartreuse blade right here. Um, and then I think he said he was gonna do it in the BFL rig. Uh, yep, BFL rig. So I'll show this to you real quick if I grab one. So this is the BFL rig. All you guys that fish the BFLs or uh, stuff like that, <clears throat> you have to have a special A rig. Um, I just use Kitex, man. Kitex. Uh, I also use uh, where are they at? These right here, I throw quite a bit. I throw these on the back of A rig quite a bit. Uh, Yes, I do use that color uh, on my chartreuse blades. It's a purple dawn suit. shed like those, but for the most part, I'm a Kitek guy, or I'll throw a skinny dipper. So I get asked a lot, what's the difference in the BFL rig? So this is a Hog Farmer BFL rig. Um, you've got five wires on this thing, uh, but for F FLW's BFL specifications, and you know you can bend this out, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's only two, three wires here that you can put a swim bait with the hook. These are dummy wires that have blades. Uh, you can have five blades in an FLW BFL, and you can have three hooks. So that's the BFL rigs. You can get this with chartreuse blades. So it's a cooler version of this right here. Man, right now, the time the water is right, it's almost too muddy. For this chartreuse right here but to hog farm these are legit they don't tear up you need a 30 dollars for some of his a rigs but you know throw them on that 20 20 pound fluorocarbon or 65 pound braid 
invest in an A-Rig Retriever and no big deal. That's why I like light wire hooks instead of those big uh, heavy gauge hooks for A-Rig because those light wire hooks don't get hung up. What's up, Bill? Bill Hamilton up in here. Bill is my work buddy over there at Pella. Great guy. He actually trained me. He's a great teacher. And uh, Bill says he's got a little private lake that he can't wait to take me to. What's up, Cody Fishing? Hello to you. You should come to San Diego and fish some trout and eat monsters with me. Also, I'm a glass guy, too. I like you a lot now, Dave. I like you. I would love to come out there for some trout eaters. So, All right. I'm going to go ahead and run the contest right now. So everybody's paying attention. Let's give some hog farmer away. Hogfarmerbaits.com, Bass Bro. Here, I'll put the link in the description. Real quick. When you go to this website... Uh-oh. What is going on? When you go to this website, you can select which style and you want the Chartreuse Blades. I'm going to put the link here in the chat. I do like a moderate fast for a chatterbait. Love hammer rods. Great rods. So, all right. Here's the contest. The first person to tell me the score from the Tennessee-UK game and who is the leading scorer on Tennessee, put it right down in the comment section and you're going to win some hog farmer stuff. You can use Google, whatever. I know the score, and I know who is the leading scorer. And you're going to win some hog farmer stuff. John, oh man. Let's see who just won that. Let's see who won that. John Landers, you won. You were the first person to tell me. Whoa, you got to remember who won. What was the winning score? I say 52-71, 62-54 Kentucky. 52-71 uh, Bone. Uh, who won, Tennessee or Kentucky? Uh, the correct answer is 71-52 Tennessee and Jordan Bone. So let's see who was the first person to answer that. But I will tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to post my email here and I'm going to send two packages out because I don't want to John Landers got it backwards but I'm not going to uh, hurt him but the official score was 71 uh, 52 uh, Tennessee and Jordan Bone so Depp Bass and John Landers uh, here's my email please send me uh, your address uh, ship shipping address to Baxter to my email I just post it right there and I'll send you both a gift package how about that we'll have two winners yeah man we talking tackle we talking sports uh, so I figured that'd be a quick little contest I didn't want to random select because you know what the guys on YouTube deserve to win and I want to let you guys know right now that uh, not fair I did not watch the game all you gotta do, Bill, is ask me for tackle. I'll take care of you, buddy. So, uh, I used to do this in football season. I would always say, hey, whoever gets the closest score, come back next week. But, uh, uh, anyway, uh, you guys, make sure you email me. I post my email address there. Send me your address and whatnot. How's the blog going? Man, Chris, I have done nothing with my website lately. I've just been really busy. I'm not going to have a booth at the classic. I'm just uh I'm just kind of going to go uh go there and do a little blog like I did at the East Tennessee Fishing Show. Uh the winner Rick was actually John Landers and Depp Bass. Uh those two guys won. I'll think of a better way to do a giveaway. You know what? I got a bunch of good stuff uh to give away. I may do it in another Instagram uh video. I've got some uh stuff from I've actually got one of these. Check this out. I'd love to get this in your hands. This is a Z-Man Sling Blades. Best lip was to jig off the bottom. Uh, LV500, without a doubt, is really good. So I've got plenty of cool stuff to give away. So go ahead. You can send it to me, Rick. I might need it. 
I have used the Shimano X Pride. It is a sweet, sweet rod. I have not tried the Big M. You should have asked you the best Tennessee basketball player ever in the NBA. So that would probably be uh, Dale Ellis or Allen Houston. Uh, right now, uh, Josh Richardson's lining up. But uh, uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, a subscriber here. And uh, he sent me some really cool swim baits. Somebody asked me about Smash Tech swim baits. Well, he sent me this little uh, Smash Tech weedless gizzard shad. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll be honest, it's not near as big as I thought it would be. Do the Quake 70, I fish it on the bottom, and I rip it up and down, and uh, man, it uh, that's how I like to fish it. You don't happen to have any pre-lunker hog collar spinner baits or nowhere to get any. Whew. No, I don't. Those are good ones. Man, Hayslip was a bust. Uh, I tell you, CJ Watson turned into a good pro. Uh, I have not been fishing much at all this year. Not one time. It's been working. It's been cold. When I want to go, it's been rainy. You know anything about Duo Real's G-Fix vibration bait? I do not. I do not. What do you suggest for fishing thick lily pads? Uh, swim jig? Uh, and then when it's hot, got to throw that frog. Uh, curve 55s over cloud, C9 or C6 and Y. Um, I like the curve if I'm fishing steep rocky banks, if I'm covering a C9, C6, that's kind of like your bandit kind of bait, I guess. The C6 and C10 remind me of a middle end and a deep little end. Totally different action. Uh, the curve 55 is going to have more of that erratic hunting action. Really like that on really rocky stuff. If I'm just, uh, you know, maybe I'm fishing offshore a little bit, I like the C6 and C10, so... Dude, I know. Dude, the Porco was awesome. Peyton Manning, best falls all-time sports player. Close. I would say uh, Reggie White and maybe even Alvin Kamara right now is crazy. So, Anyway, so this is the uh, Gizzard from uh, Smash Tech. And this is a bluegill color. Very interesting bait. Very interesting. So, a uh, shout-out to that... Uh, I think his name is Matt on Instagram, but he also sent me a bait that I've been looking for for a long time. Check this out. This is the 316 Rising Sun. This is the Big Daddy. This is the 7-inch. And I am excited to get this swim bait right here. Um, did not have to do that. Totally awesome he did. Uh, rig this with a big old beast hook. This sucker right here is sexy and has the bluegill color i think you can get them on uh the 316 uh website and then he sent me one with a beast hook in it and he's already got this thing rigged up for me he even died to tell chartreuse he knows what he's doing if he sent me that rigged up like that so appreciate it fella and uh so this is the small version the six inch version this is the big daddy and uh this uh thing right here is an awesome swim bait i've never thrown it but this one's got teeth marks on it so that's a good idea that it works um these are all hand poured mickey ellis has got on that so really excited for that let's see i'll answer a few questions g-force rods are great for the money 99 bucks bait man i hear the guys up north are throwing whopper ploppers over the ice sorry guys we're starting to catch james here in texas we need one week of warm weather Dude, I bet you could catch one over the ice on a plopper if you tried hard. Uh, poachers are in five inch convex, seven inch smash. Smash would like to see. I, I, if you know somebody at Smash Tech, uh, tell them to send me some baits and I'll, I'll talk about them. I'd love to throw them, but but this man, I, I've been waiting to get a 316 swim bait for a while now. I have some mission fish and it's really old school, but it's rising sun, dude. It's it looks way better in person than uh, it does on their website. Uh, this thing is killer looking. So I have a feeling it's going to be kind of like the babe. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. And this thing looks killer. Uh, also, check this out. This dude sent me some wiggle warts. Uh, original OG warts. He packed these things up good. Let's see what... I mean... 
any wiggle wart I will take. Uh, so pretty cool for the dude to just send me some random baits. And uh, because I definitely don't have enough. Corrado DC is a good rail. Uh, the Mickey rig uh, is a great, great presentation for vertical fishing. Look at check it out. Sent me a little OG wart. Man, this thing is old. It does have the wiggle wart stamp down here. Uh, yeah, you can get these swim baits on, uh, I think it's 316lures.com. Look them up on Facebook. Now, I got some really expensive hard baits. So. Let's see. Now, it's got a few six-inch line through STC. Man, I love those STCs. Uh, I'm going to do a big swim bait giveaway pretty soon. We're I'm going to let you guys know we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. I think we're like 180 off. As soon as we hit a 10,000 subs, I'm going to make a few phone calls and I'm going to get the biggest Janosaur giveaway we can do for you guys. And I may keep it, to, I'm going to open it up to YouTube everywhere. Thoughts on Tokyo Rig? I've answered this a lot. I've never fished it, but obviously I kind of feel like it's a little, it's kind of a Carolina rig style. Uh, if you drag a jig, like to drag a jig, you'll like that. Check this out. This is a, this is a wee wart. So both of these are little wee warts. So appreciate that. Whoever sent these to me, um, I think his name was Matt on Instagram. Thanks so much uh, for the warts and definitely think for the swim baits you know i like those so i'm a glide fluke uh i was with fluke fisher fluke when he throw that uh it's a cool bait uh it's a little different it doesn't glide very wide very tight uh movement to it uh definitely has its place and it's a cool bait um then i got this this is uh i found i saw this on uh, facebook and uh some some kids in high school was painting these things i don't really remember his name but never even seen this style of bait it's it's not ball so i thought it was got a little circuit board round lip uh but that's a killer paint job it's like a tequila sunrise crawl that's pretty wicked right there so how and where do you fish bigger swim baits how deep uh, I'll fish these big suckers up to 25 foot. Uh, now I'll rig them quite a bit different, different. But uh, this is a man. Who, I'm gonna need to find this guy and have him paint some other stuff. But you know, this kid in high school painting this. This is like a tequila sunrise. They made an old rattle trap called tequila sunrise. Real good, but it's got some purple and some orange. Really good looking color right there. See how it turns green. Man, whoever did this, they made an awesome job. So shout out to that guy. But uh, anyway, let's see what time it is. It is 8.01 and I'm going to have to jump off here. So here's what I want you guys to do for me. Um, if you watch this video afterwards, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. Are the gravel or brown eye curves in the Bateman box? Uh, I forgot what color is it. I think it's like crawfish crunch or something. I do I am about that purple money um, but uh, speaking of money me and your buddy Jake Lawrence we're gonna go, go do some fishing so I got uh, I got somebody that's fixing to start coming on this channel a lot uh, and his name's Jake Lawrence he won the Costa event at uh, uh, he won the Costa series event um, last year on Kentucky Lake Jake is a little younger than me we got a mutual friend Ben Parker and uh, Jake wants me to go practice swimming for the coast and document it, but I said, I tell you what, why don't you uh, get on uh, my YouTube channel? And Jake is one of the best hummingbird uh, electronics guys I've ever been around, and uh, I'm really excited. But Jake is a great fisherman, and he's going to give you lots of tips and. Uh, and so we're going to look to do 10 to 15 videos. It's going to come on some live streams. And uh, he guides here on Kentucky Lake. And uh, I'm really excited to do some work with my buddy Jake. So that was a big old small mouth. Thanks, Brett. I appreciate it, buddy, anytime. So they have so many crawl colors, all, all the same. They're not all the same. They're a little different. I think uh, the color that comes in the Bateman box is Ghost Missouri Crawl. But 
this is the color for the dirty water, this muddy water crawl. Gravel crawl is great. Uh, get you a Bateman box and make sure you try to grab some of those new curves. They have a ghost table rock shad, and I haven't got it. Make sure you grab that one. No problem, Jack. Thank you for joining. Uh, my computer just died. Man, make, a, make fishing great again. There we go. So I appreciate each and one of you joining in uh, every week. If you like the Saturday nights, I'll keep doing it. But I'd like to also do Tackle Tuesday as well. Tackle Tuesday is going to be more oriented into something specific. Dude, I love the 744. That is my favorite Dobbins rod ever made. Uh, that is, I love throwing that for big worms. Um, I love throwing it uh, for jigs. That is a great, great rod. So... Tackle Tuesday, uh, you guys leave a comment, what y'all want to see. We need to do the retro baits. I know you guys really like it when I pull out that old stuff. So, um, but uh, we'll come up with a topic Tuesday, and we'll do it like uh, 6 o'clock. So let's let's try to do old school baits. I'm going to do a little tackle uh, picking, see if I can't find some other stuff. So, anyway, uh, guys, thank you so much. If you donated to the stream... You guys are awesome. If you didn't donate to the stream, you're awesome as well for joining in. Again, we're close to 10,000 subs. Thank you guys so much. Love talking to you every Saturday. I wish I could do this every night, but quite frankly, I'd probably burn you guys out. Um, and hey, I'm not political like the other Saturday Night Live. We just talk baits. And uh, again, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, Six Cents Fishing, use the code Baitman for 10% off. Hogfarmerbaits.com. Uh, the winners, make sure you send me an email. I'll get you guys taken care of. And, um, yeah, that's it.